You're not the only one dealing with all this change that's happening right now. But you know, I found that change and challenge can be the, the greatest stepping stone to the top. But this does not happen unless you and I look at life and what we do with a passion. The key is think outside the self. You've heard think outside the box for 10 years, right? It's think outside the self. Individually, we overestimate what we can do by ourselves, but together as a team, we underestimate what we can do. Become one and enjoy the fruits of making a difference together. And with two down, here is Ed Hearn, who had his first big league hit in the second inning. He's a youngster who was drafted by Philadelphia. He had an appointment to the West Point Military Academy and decided to be a baseball player. He would have made an impressive-looking general. He's 6'3", 215. I made it to that the penthouse of all my dreams as a young boy. I mean, I had I had sacrificed so much to be there to get to that point. No doubt, I never, I probably never really dreamt that I would play in the big leagues, let alone be in a World Series and be on the winning team. He's breaking out, breaking out. The Mets have won the World Series. The dream has come true. The Mets have won the World Series. Coming from behind to win the seventh ball game. And so it was over. The Mets were world champions. There's a couple of gifts I want to give to you, and one of them is a little perspective today. Just when I had life in the palm of my hands, I mean I had it right where I wanted it. It was jerked out from underneath me. But this is a man who, first of all, was the short end of the David Cohn trade. The Royals gave away a two-time Cy Young Award winner, and Ed took the heat for it because he got injured right away. On top of that, when his career ended, he had a kidney transplant, a life-threatening blood disorder, and a life-threatening sleeping disorder disease. And when we interviewed him a month before, or two months before, he had had cancer. So I went from the penthouse to the outhouse. What do you do when you're facing adversity, when you're facing change, and you think you have no control over it? I was feeling sorry for myself because life had thrown me a curve. This was potentially a strikeout curve. I was having the mother of all pity parties. But it was three o'clock in the morning, shades were drawn, the door was shut. It was pitch black dark. I was only one year out of losing my career as an athlete. Why me? All the questions we all ask. Do you remember when we were kids we had the parties and there was always a party pooper? Well, she came that night. The door to my hospital room swung open. The light from the hall filled the room. And into the doorway walked the midnight shift nurse. And when she walked in that doorway, it got dark again in my room. <laughs> she reached over, she turned on the light to my room, and I realized why they only let her work the graveyard shift. <laughs> she started heading over to my bed. She had this walk that just said something was not right. She pulled my chart out of the top of the bed. She looked down and said, boy, what's the matter with you? Now my first thought was, I hadn't been called boy in a long time. <laughs> Quickly though, my second thought was she'd call me anything she wanted to call me. <laughs> he said, boy, you're feeling sorry for yourself, aren't you? 
Every once in a while I see somebody like you. Well, I've been working this war for 10 years. It makes me sick when I see somebody like you. You just got the gift of life, boy. She reached in her holster and grabbed that thermometer. <laughs> and she was heading down checking tonsils or something. Mm, she poked that thing in. She reached up, grabbed the blood pressure cuff. She wrapped around my arm and then she spread out. <laughs> you got the picture, huh? <laughs> she started to pump on that cuff. And she's looking right deep in my eyes. She said, boy, I'm going to tell you something my mama told me a long time ago. And she'd stop and just stare at me right now. Y'all ever been through the Lincoln Tunnel? <laughs> this was my view. <laughs> my fingernails are just about ready to go <laughs> off my hand. I'm going to please just get it out, babe. Come on. <laughs> said, boy, I grew up with nothing. But mom and dad told me to be thankful for the shoes I had. Because some days can make the man with no feet. Boy, you better think about that. Psst, she looked me out and caught and caught. She turned out the door, she went. That lady gave me something very special. She gave me some perspective. Life throws you curves, so you gotta keep swinging. You gotta keep swinging. Because you can't hit a home run sitting on the bench. Or worse yet, sitting in stands. Beat Karen Kornacki, the Kansas City reporter who's done more than just cover the story. She says she got a ringside seat to all of Ed's highs and lows since the very first day he arrived as a ball player for the Kansas City Royals. And welcome Ed and Trish Hearn. Conquering Life's Curves is the title of their book. There's a lesson in there for everybody, right, Ed, you say? You betcha, boy. Uh, you know, as a young boy, I had, I had dreamed of being a big league ball player. That's all I wanted to do, and then um, uh, things changed. You know, of course, as I travel around the country speaking today, I find that we all face changes in, in life. We face challenges, and uh, uh, fortunately, the things that have happened in my life, I now am able to go out there and empower other people, share with them a message of, of hope and and that we can overcome these challenges. Oh.